Welcome to the Gospel Activist Podcast, Ministry of Stepping Out Ministries, where we explore how we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in our modern context. Here is your host, pastor and evangelist, Kevin Henry. Well, welcome to our first episode of the Gospel Activist Podcast. We're excited about starting this new venture as a part of Stepping Out Ministries as a means to help equip the church and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our focus here is to preach the gospel to any person, anywhere, anytime, and no matter the cost. Before I get into today's content, I want to share a little bit about what Stepping Out Ministries is all about and invite you to go to our website at steppingoutministries.com. And on our website, you'll find our statement of faith, so what we believe as a ministry, but also what are the, some of the tools that are available for evangelism and for being trained in evangelism. You'll also find on that website some multimedia and also our podcast, which you're listening to right now. Also, if you're listening to this podcast and you've never heard the gospel, or if you don't know if you're saved or not, we invite you to go to our website, and there's a little article on there to help understand if, whether you're saved from your sins or not. And you can go to our website at steppingoutministries.com slash saved.html, and you'll have a list there of what it means to be saved, and if you don't know or would like to talk with someone more about how to be saved, uh, there's also a form to fill out there, and someone will contact you as soon as possible. The purpose of Stepping Out Ministries is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people and to equip the church to communicate this message. As a part of Stepping Ministries, we, we have a reason why we named our ministry Stepping Out. And there's four key points about that. First is, stepping out means to step out from darkness into light. That is to step out from unbelief and sin into belief in God and salvation offered by Jesus Christ through his death on the cross and resurrection. Two, stepping out means to step out from the discontent of a lackluster faith to a dynamic and mature faith. This is stepping out from the cultural Christian life into living daily, even moment by moment, for God. This means to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, so that we walk in relationship with Him through obedience and listening to His voice. Thirdly, stepping out means to step out from the status quo that so many Christians find themselves. We choose to be used of God to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with boldness to any and every person who listens willingly or not because of their need for salvation from sin and eternity in hell. We choose to be used of God to influence any Christian, to disciple them into spiritual maturity and equipping for serving God through evangelism and discipleship. Fourthly, the meaning of stepping out means to be faithful to God's call to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ, making disciples for him and through his power. Our purpose is to equip the church to share the gospel with their friends, families, neighbors, or even the stranger on the street. Romans 10, verse 14 through 15 says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. That really is our desire at Stepping Out Ministries to really be out there preaching the gospel to all those who are lost. And as we read here in Romans 10, 14 and 15, we have to go out and preach the gospel. I meet many Christians who talk about how, oh, I just want to go out and be an example, or I share my faith through what I do. And it is good for us to make sure we're living what we believe, but it's imperative to preach the words of the gospel. Otherwise, a person isn't going to understand their need for salvation and to be saved. So this is what Step in Ministries is all about. 
Again, we want to invite you to come to our website at steppingoutministries.com. And again, there's a lot of information on there on evangelism. And maybe your church is in a place where you don't really have a strategy or most people don't know how to share, share the gospel in your church. And if you'd like to have someone come out to share and how to preach the gospel in any kind of context, we'd be more than willing to arrange to have someone come and teach and train you in that. We also have a Facebook page for this podcast, and that's at facebook.com slash gospelactivist. And we invite you to go there and uh, click like and uh, share this podcast with other people too, especially Christians who, who don't know how to share the gospel. On this podcast, we'll be dealing with a lot of different things, styles of evangelism, how to communicate the gospel. Also, what are some of the things that we're facing as a church in context of sharing the gospel? In North America, culture seems to be changing rapidly, and it does affect the church and how we proclaim the gospel. And so these are some things that, it's, that are good for us to wrestle and talk about. I also plan on having guests throughout different episodes, and uh, especially talking to some experts on how they share their faith and even how they train their churches in evangelism. We plan on having this podcast on twice a month. I also want to be available to equip people, other tr- Christians, in how to share the gospel. And so that's why I wanted to do this podcast and then make it available twice a month. And so in the middle of the month, about the second Thursday of the month and the last Thursday of the month, we'll be posting our podcast. I want to share with you now a little bit about what is the gospel? Part of the problem is a lot of Christians don't know how to really communicate the gospel. There are some who do a great job of it, but there's, there's many Christians that I've come across who don't know how to proclaim the gospel. I remember one time going to a shopping mall in Edmonton with some friends of mine and, and sharing the gospel with strangers. And I came across one person. I, I started to go through the gospel message and and the gentleman said that he was saved. And I said, great, so how, how would you share the gospel with someone? And his response was, well, I, I pray with my daughter. I said, great, but how would you communicate the gospel with someone else? And he stood there for quite a, a long time, for, for several seconds, and then finally ended in saying, I, I, I got to go, and, and continued on. He he didn't know how to communicate the gospel. And so it's important for the church to do a good job of training the people to share the gospel. There are many lost people around us, people who are going to hell for their sins. And so they need to know the gospel message so that they can escape the judgment, God's wrath, in the future. So what is the gospel? Well, Scott Dawson says, We are called not to bring success, but to be faithful. Our task is not in winning or losing, but in knowing how to share the plan. The challenge of church leaders today is to focus on training soul winners, not seeing results. Results will come when we know the message and how to communicate it. I think Scott Dawson hits on something very important there, that we do need to train the church to effectively communicate the gospel And so here is what the gospel is. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ died for our sins upon the cross so that we fallen man might receive his free gift of salvation. There's five points to this definition. The first is man is fallen. Here's three different scripture verses that could be used to prove that point. First Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That verse communicates clearly that everyone has sinned. From very on early in age, everyone has fallen in sin of some kind. Galatians 3.22 says, But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. First John 1 John 1.8 also speaks to man being fallen. If we say we have no sin, we, re- we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
These verses clearly point out that man is falling. All of us are sinners. The second point of the gospel is sin separates us from God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. The Greek word there for death is thanatos, which means, in the widest sense, death comprising all the miseries arising from sin, as well physical death, as the loss of life consecrated to God and blessed in him on earth, to be followed by wretchedness in hell. So it's very clear that this death isn't just a physical death, it's an eternity in a place called hell. And hell, as defined in the Bible, is a very awful place, where it says there will be weeping and gnashing in teeth. If you were to think of the worst nightmare you ever had, or maybe the worst horror film you, you've ever seen, the nightmares you may have had from that, and, and the mental anguish of that, it, was, it would be horrific. But you add on top of that physical pain, pain that does not end at all. Think about the worst pain you've ever had, and multiply that a hundredfold, and you still haven't scratched the surface to the pain and suffering a person will face in hell. There's also emotional anguish, so eternity in hell is not a wonderful place. Some people sometimes say, well, they'd rather be in hell where the party is than in heaven. Well, they really don't understand what hell is then because pain is not a party. No one likes physical pain. And that's what eternity in hell is. It's eternal pain and suffering. No relief from it ever. So it's clear that the wages of sin is death. Again, wages meaning that it's something that we deserve. We garner something. When you work a job and you've done a job, you get paid for that job. That's your wages. Same thing with sin. It garners a wage, the wage of death. The law, we need to understand, though, helps us define what sin is. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six says, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. So we need to understand what the law is. Another verse that speaks to this is James 2, verse 10, when it says, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. So if we've broken one of God's laws, we're accountable for all of it. What are God's laws? Well, it's his perfect moral law, particularly the Ten Commandments, that show us what sin is. A lot of people like to say that, well, I'm a good person, so God should be able to let me in because I've done a lot of good work. But really, there is no such thing as a good person because we have broken God's law. So here is God's law. Have you ever lied about something? If you lied something, and we call that person a liar. One of the Ten Commandments says we're not supposed to bear false witness. In other words, we're not to lie. So if we have lied, we have broken God's law. And as we read in James 2, verse 10, if we've broken one of God's law, we're accountable for all of it. Here's a couple other laws God has given us. God tells us we're not to steal. So if we're ever stolen on anything, we've broken God's law. God also says that we're supposed to honor our fathers and mothers. Part of honoring them is to obey them. If we don't obey our parents when we're children, then we've broken God's law. It's pretty safe to say that all of us have broken those first two that I've mentioned, or those first three that I've mentioned. There's more to that, though. Some people say, well, I've never murdered someone, so I've been breaking that commandment. But Jesus goes further with that. He says, if you've hated someone, you've murdered them in your own heart. So if you've ever hated someone or, or strongly disliked them, That means you've murdered them in your own heart. So you're guilty of murdering someone. Also in scriptures it talks about not committing adultery. And some might say, well, I've never committed adultery. But Jesus, again, takes that standard to a higher level. And he says, if you lust in your heart after a woman, you've committed adultery in your heart. So if you've ever lusted after another person, you've committed adultery in your own heart. So, by even be looking at these, we understand that we have broken God's law, and we're accountable for it. 
This brings us to the third point of the gospel, which means, which is the consequences of sin. Again, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. That is the consequence of our sin. An eternity in hell. Eternal suffering. Revelation 21 verse 8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So we see even in Revelations, clearly God points out some lifestyle, some sins, that if we continue in these things, it garners the consequence of eternity in hell. Now this is all the bad news. It's good to understand that though, because we need to know the bad news before we come to the remedy. Kind of like going to a doctor. If you go to a doctor and a doctor says, well, I have some good news for you. I have the right medicine that's going to cure you. You're going to be like, well, what's the problem? Like, <laughs> So the doctor needs to explain to us what our medical condition is, why we would need the medication, and then give us the good news of here's the medication, here's the cure, the treatment for what ails us. And it, that's what Scripture comes to. It comes to a remedy for sin. Romans 6.23 continues, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. This love that God speaks of, his love for us, is Jesus, as we read in Romans 6.23, coming and offering us a free gift. Romans 5.8 says, But God shows his love for us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's where we begin to see the remedy for sin. Our sin had to be paid for somehow. There's no amount of good works we can do to be saved from our sins. And what sin requires, the payment for that, is death. Blood must be shed for sins. So Jesus came willingly and died on the cross in our place for our sins. He ransomed us. He paid f the penalty for us so that we could be saved from our sins. 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. We again see from this verse that the reason Jesus died was to pay for our sins. And that is the only way to have forgiveness from our sins. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen to those all-important words again. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is only through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross that we can be saved from our sins and have an eternity away from hell. Some people sometimes think, though, that God chooses certain people to go to heaven and some to go to hell. And, and this simply is not true. 1 Timothy 2 verse 3 says, This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 confirms this. The Lord is slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but his patience toward them, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Both of these verses speak to God not desiring anyone to go to hell. Again, that's why God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Because he doesn't desire anyone to go to hell. But he desires them to come to faith. This is not an argument for universalism. God doesn't save everyone. It's because people need to choose to accept his gift of salvation. And this comes to the fifth point of the gospel, that we as man, mankind, need to respond to this gift of salvation. 
John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then in 1 John 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Jesus did it all. He paid the fine for our sins, but we must respond to that. We must respond to that by confessing our sins to Jesus Christ and then choosing to turn from those sins and no longer doing them. We call that repenting. That's confession of our sins and turning from them and choosing not to do them anymore. As we've done that, we are actually doing a step of faith, which is also required for salvation. So we confess our sins, repenting of our sins, and we place our faith in Jesus Christ. Thus, we are saved then from our sins. That is how we accept the gift of salvation from Jesus Christ. Here's the assurance we have of this. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So here's the proof that we have, that we are sinners before a holy God, and God will hold us account for our sins. But God sent his only son, Jesus, to die for our sins, so that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, confessing and repenting of our sins, thus placing our faith in Jesus, he forgives us of our sins. That is the gospel message. That is what the gospel is. This is such an important message for all of us as Christians to share with our lost friends, family, and neighbors, and even the stranger on the street. God puts people in our lives daily to share this gospel message with them. Because as we read before, God doesn't desire anyone to perish. He wants them to come to faith in Him. He wants them to be saved. That's why He created them. He's created each one of us because He wants to have a relationship with us. So He offers this free gift of salvation to us. I want to thank you so much for joining us in our first episode for the Gospel Activist Podcast. Our next episode will be looking at the biblical basis for evangelism. We'd like to invite you again to visit us at our website, steppingoutministries.com, and even going to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gospelactivist, and join us on our Facebook page. We'd like to open up for any questions you might have as well. If you go to our website, on our podcast site, you'll be able to see a form there to fill out. If you have a question about evangelism or even apologetics, and we'll get into apologetics as well, we we'll to invite you to share your question with us, and we'll try to answer any question you may have. Again, we want to thank you for joining us in our first episode of The Gospel Activist. I'd like to invite you to join us next time. For now... This is Pastor and Evangelist Kevin Henry reminding you to preach the gospel to every person, anytime, anywhere, and no matter the cost. You have been listening to the Gospel Activist Podcast, a ministry of Stepping Out Ministries. To submit a question for Pastor Kevin to answer on the podcast, visit us at www.steppingoutministries.com slash podcast.html. Thank you for listening, and we invite you to join us for our next podcast.